Okay, just a short uh, lecture on uh, allowing conductances to not just be one. I mean, we just saw that I'd like to, my pink box, which was my circuit, and I was, which I was going to consider as a, just a single conductor with a given conductance, the effective conductance was 8 over 5. Now, that's not 1. So I need to, to generalise my theory to account for conductances that aren't just one. I want them to be whatever I, whatever I choose. So here's the graph that we've been considering all along. And what I've done now is I've actually put the labelled, if you like, I've just by the side of them to indicate that the conductances are all different now. CA, CB, CC, CD, CE. OK, and if you write down Ohm's law, and in fact, you know what, it's just instructive to just do it once um, for all of the edges. So... Uh, minus CA will be um, X2 minus X1, and then the current, according to Ohm, will be minus CB, um, X3 minus X2, and then WC, the current in um, edge C, will be the conductance of edge C times X4 minus X1, and then WD, the current in edge D, will be the conductance of edge D times X3 minus X4, and then the current in edge E is the conductance, minus the conductance of that edge, times x2 minus x4. And I'm getting that. Um, sorry, that's just gone. Let me just put those over, over there so you can see them properly. Now, um, those are just individual statements of the Ohm's law for each of the five edges. There's five of them, of course. I'd like to write that more compactly. OK? Now, how do I do that? Well, it's quite easy because you remember that what we decided was that my E, which was my incidence matrix times the vector of node potentials, in this case voltages, gave me, in this case, I'll let me write it out. It actually gave me x2 minus x1, x3 minus x2, uh, x4 minus x1, x3 minus x4, and x2 minus x4. Just, just, just check from the incidence matrix. I don't want to write the incidence matrix out all again. I know that this is the vector of potential differences across the edges in the direction of the arrows. OK, now let's just stare at these two statements. Uh, this is a convenient vector written using a matrix, the incidence matrix. And here's five equations. So I can imagine uh, putting my W into... Uh, all of my Ws, all of my currents, into a vector. And the question is, how can I write the right-hand sides, these, in vector form, okay, using these matrices? Well, I think we have to do the following thing, don't we? So let me just, um, let me just do this in a yellow. I have to introduce a diagonal matrix a diagonal, and I'm going to call it a conductance matrix. And here it is. Can you see what it's got to be? It's got to be 5 by 5, and it will be diagonal with all of the conductances. Sorry, these are getting small. Let me just make it a bit bigger. It's going to be diagonal, uh, so there's going to be zeros everywhere off this um, this, this diagonal of five elements. And all I've done is I've put the, the conductances, which are all positive quantities, remember, C, A, B, C, D, E, in the diagonal. And can you not see now that this, of course, will now be, I have to put that minus sign in there, of course. But can you not see that it will be the diagonal matrix multiplied by this? But that, of course, is E, which is A, X. So in other words, in order to incorporate non-unity conductance, in other words, different conductances that are up to me, this is now how I write Ohm's law. Okay. Previously, of course, when all of my conductances were one, this was just the identity matrix because I just had ones on the diagonal. And that's why I didn't even bother writing it before, because it was just the identity matrix. Okay. So this is the conductance matrix. And um, what it means is, let's just uh, finish this off with another statement. Remember, my F now is the divergence of the currents. But we've now got a new expression for this. 
it's minus C A times X, okay? So what I get now, the, the minus signs cancel, and I get A transpose C A times X. And you know what? I'm still gonna call that K. When C was the identity, A transpose A, I just called the graph Laplacian, uh, or just did the discrete Laplacian. This is a generalized Laplacian, or I prefer to call it a weighted Laplacian. In this case, it's weighted by the conductances of the edges, okay? So, um, so, so this is uh, what we're going to call. We're, it, throughout the course, we'll just use the, the symbol K. But if it's got non-unity conductances, this will be the weighted Laplacian. Okay. So there we go. That's all we need to do to generalize our circuit theory to general values of the conductance of the edges.